Well, today's a big day for the West Palm Beach Fishing Club. Through the club's charitable foundation, the Palm Beach County Fishing Foundation, we are launching our second batch of reef darts. Now, reef darts are a really innovative type of artificial reef structure that utilizes surplus power poles and other surplus materials to make high vertical profile artificial reef modules on the bottom of the ocean floor. These power poles are used and uh, modified in a way that allows them that when they're pushed off the side of the barge, they end up in a vertical orientation, creating a forest of vertical power poles, if you will, underneath the water. Plus, the other conservation benefit to this is that these surplus materials like power poles and old culverts are finding a new life. They're not uh, being added to our local landfills and they're not costing uh, utility companies or municipalities extra money to grind them up or dispose of them. So we're really on to something pretty cool here and this is our second go at it. The first go we had a lot of success. We've tweaked the design this year and we're really looking forward to getting these things in the water. Now each reef dart weighs eight and a half tons and most of that mass is here at the base where the base actually provides the stability of the pole as it's oriented vertically in the water column. Reef darts can be used in a variety of ways. They can be used as breadcrumbs dropped in between two existing artificial reefs so that when divers do drift dives or fishermen are drifting along the edge, they have more reef complexity that they're fishing or diving on along their entire drift. Reef darts can actually enhance existing artificial reefs by adding complexity on the outskirts, the perimeter of an existing artificial reef. Of course, we've designed reef darts to be sunk in a variety of depths, including 400, 500 feet of water where we haven't yet created any artificial reefs off Palm Beach County. One of the main intents of reef darts was to create deep water benthic habitat, high vertical profile habitat in really deep water that provides places for fish like Warsaw grouper, snowy grouper, and red snapper. These are overfished species of fish that need a lot of help. And so by adding additional marine habitat at those depths, we're providing almost a marine refuge for these species, helping them recover. Jim, you've been involved with this concept since we've kind of come up with it. What do you think the environmental benefits will be from a reef dart initiative? Good gracious, Tom. This, this is amazing. Uh, what you get with this type of structure, with height, you get an aggregation of all types of bait fish. Those fish will attract other fish. We hope that we'll get the, the grouper uh, concept going really good, the Warsaws, the Snowies, and the uh, Amberjack, and that type of thing, and hope to get a spawning area. There's nothing really in this whole location except the muddy bottom when we go to deep water. This is really a trial area right here. The beauty of this is it'll also grow all types of fouling organisms on it. That's, that's really going to be amazing. And in deep water, we may even get oculina corals, which are, we don't even have here in this area. We have them at Fort Pierce. That's about our closest point. When we get down into deeper water, we're going to have a real tremendous benefit because that is going to take us into a situation where we have no real current problems, no wave problems, no hurricane problems. We're out of harm's way. We're in lower dissolved oxygen. So something like a ship, I'll give you an example. A ship we look at when we put in shallow water, the lifetime is probably 50 years, give or take, depending on hurricanes, ripping it apart, and that type of thing. We go offshore, we bump that maybe 500 years, maybe a thousand years for the same vessel that we put down. This stuff will stay forever. The Romans put concrete that's still down. So this will be there forever. And so that's the beauty of this. So once you get oculinas and the fissure that are attracting and that type of thing, this is just gonna be a tremendous benefit. This trial run is, is a great, great experiment. And my hat's off to you for all the effort that you've done in creating this and coming up with a concept and doing something out of the box. That's what's really neat. And I, I was reading a book last night and I have a quote which is really kind of interesting. I wrote it down. It says, this is by Winston Churchill. It says, the man who never makes mistakes is the man who never does anything. You 
can't have anything that's really any neater than this for the price. That's the beauty. It's cheap to build, it's cheap to put to deploy. What would really be nice is that if we go to the deep water, we deploy these in one area, as many as we can, and then we also put something in there with some superstructure to it, a ship, an oil rig, or something of that nature. Hopefully Palm Beach County will come up with that part. We can keep working with this part. We're really not creating this for fishermen or for divers. We're trying to create habitat. And reef darts aren't meant to replace sinking ships or other types of structures no. when they become available. No, no. This is just all about doing something on a regular basis that's cost effective. Cost effective, not only cost effective, but gives you a different biological look, if you will, because this gives you structure in the water column. And we're giving new life to things like old culverts and old power poles. And the beauty of this is, if it really works here, this could go statewide, even into the Gulf, wherever they want to do it, with a totally different concept that'll really help really bring in a lot of fish and, and it'll provide a lot of habitat. We're really building a template for other coastal communities Absolutely. around the country. This is really neat because this is a springboard to many, many, many other other areas in the, in the state. Well, you know, the West Palm Beach Fishing Club was the one that had the very first artificial reef permitted in the Correct. state of Florida. So we have a pretty long history of doing some innovative stuff. And this is a continuation of a very long conservation tradition. So here's a prototype reef dart uh, module that's uh, scale to size, it's about one-tenth scale. And you can see that the base of the dart has holes to allow the current to uh, pass through the base as the module sinks through the water column. We're trying to overcome a whole lot of very, very challenging variables with this project, not the least of which is a three and a half, four knot current that we're experiencing today. But also when the reef dart makes impact with the bottom, the impact loading is significant. And we're trying to prevent the pole from snapping at impact by having a very substantial collar. Hopefully all these parts come together so that the reef dart lays in this orientation on the bottom. The key to getting reef darts to be successful is to get the pole so that it ends up in a vertical orientation on the bottom. And therein lies the biggest challenge to reef darts is modifying the base of the pole so that when the dart makes impact with the bottom that it lands upright. Hopefully we've got enough mass on the bottom of the dart to get that pole sticking straight up. It's still all highly experimental.